The Penguin Project, musical theater for children and young adults with special needs. Hi, this is Dr. David and welcome to Your Health, Your Choice. So if you've been following our channel for a while, we do sometimes stray from the more health things to other things related to uh, children, people with special needs, varying disabilities, etc. And today I am so, so happy to have Nora Payne with us today, who is the, let me get her title specifically right here, the producing artistic director for New Tampa Players, as well as the leader of the Penguin Project. Hi, Nora. It's so nice to see you. It's good to see you too. Thank you. Yeah. So um, we're going to talk a lot about what the Penguin Project is about. Um, um, but as I kind of had said in the introduction, um, to be able to bring children with um, varying exceptionalities together and to have peer mentors who work with them together in what becomes a rather seamless um, production if you ever have a chance to see the whole thing put together, let alone the production, which we're going to talk about itself. Um, miracles happen and uh so nora so first of all um tell me a little bit more about what how you would describe you know what the penguin project is the penguin project is a theater program for children and young adults with special needs it ha gives the opportunity and the very important support for children and young adults with special needs to participate in theater and be the stars of the show is the basic idea of penguin project um, it was created in 2004 by dr andrew morgan he lives in Illinois. He is a development, developmental pediatrician. And also, um, he was a community theater director, kind of like myself. And he saw that his um, clients did not have the same opportunities in theater that his own children had. So he came, he basically created the Penguin Project by himself with the help of his family. And um, the first Penguin Project was in 2004 and it's grown since somewhere around four years in um, parents started saying well hey it would be really great if we could have that in this city and in that city or i have a cousin that lives in new york and it would be wonderful wonderful if she could participate so they created the penguin project foundation and that's the organization that supports bringing penguin project to all the different cities in the united states and so how many cities now are there that we're up to well, I don't know about cities, but we're up to 52 chapters of the Penguin Project as of the last time I looked. Wow, that, that's just amazing that to, to, to be able to do that. That's just amazing. And um, having been somebody who has watched a couple performances and I am will be uh, will be coming with my with my tissues to um, the performances next week. Um, that's very important. I know that, yes, there <laughs> will not be a dry eye at some point. Everybody will, uh, you know, um, do it. Um, you know, it's almost hard for me to put into words the emotions that I feel about this. Um, and... To, to watch these special children get up and, I mean, first of all, it's a massive production here. There's it a is. lot of things going on stage, a lot of kids. Um, and just to be able to watch this all take place, it's just, it's absolutely amazing. Um, so tell me in terms of your own story though, in terms of how Tampa and, and, and the new Tampa players. Well, I guess it kind of begins with a little bit of my story. Um, I'm a mom of four children. My oldest is now 17 and my youngest is 10. And all of them have various special needs. Um, all of them have dyslexia, dyscalculia, dysgraphia, ADHD. So theater was hard for them. And I love theater. I mean, I, I minored in theater in college. I've done over probably over 70 productions now, mostly stage managing. Stage managing is my love. I love to create order out of chaos. So <laughs> this is perfect, you know? Well, this is absolutely perfect, yeah. <laughs> um, but when, I, when my kids were little and they wanted to participate with me, you know, we started looking at what that process really looks like from the, from the perspective of a child with special needs. So in a regular theater process, you know, you have auditions. Well, right there, there's already a couple of problems because you have to start with memorizing something. You know, memorizing a monologue, memorizing a song, something along those lines. So that's very difficult. And then if you get through that process, the next step usually involves like a callback. And in a callback, they just hand you a script and you read from, a, from something you've never seen before. So sometimes I think when we're doing that, you know, with kids and adults with special needs, we're truly testing their like reading ability rather right. than their act 
acting ability. So that's where it kind of all started was just seeing that from my own children's perspectives. And I started looking around and thinking about how this could possibly work. And in 2018, I went to the um, American Association for Community Theaters. They had a theater management conference that was in Venice, Florida. And it's a bunch of community theater managers from all across the United States. And they were talking about the various things that were working at their theater. And Penguin Project was one part of what they were talking about. And I was like, hold on, what's that? You know, and they started describing and I'm like, that's it. You know, and in that and that very day, I emailed Dr. Andy, and within a week, we were a replication site for the Penguin Project. Yeah, that's great. And uh, you know, I was so ha- you know, obviously, when he came down to help launch it, you know, the first time, and I, I did get to spend some time with him. And obviously, as a pediatrician who works with special needs kids myself, it was just like I was just such in awe, you know, of what this man just reading about him ahead of time and what he accomplished. But then obviously once you see him in action, you know, and you know, um, for everybody who knows like the, 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 one of the theme songs, like one of the real themes of the penguin project is don't stop believing, which is something that anybody who comes to the performances, which we're going to talk about, will get to have the uh, privilege of seeing and, and watching him just getting right in there and, and like doing the dance just the way that everybody else would do the (laughs) dance and kind of like teaching it along. It's just like, yeah, you know, I mean, like, you know, myself as more of a musician, as my, that's where my art comes out. It certainly doesn't come out in graphics because I could barely draw a stick figure. But, you know, to to meet another pediatrician who is so heavily supportive and involved in the arts, um, it's just you don't always come across like those types of, like you know, souls that you can march with. And uh, and again, it was just like so, so cool to that, that that was there. Now, so you came up with this idea, put it in motion. How did you find the kids? But so, and for those who know, so there are the, there were called the young actors, um, um, who are the um, the actual actors themselves, and then there are peer mentors. And the reason why I got called the Penguin Project and the Penguins in the first place is, as you may know, penguins pair off. So every young actor has a mentor who is there to on literally on stage with them standing in the background who is um there if needing to feed lines or or proper staging or kind of like pull them along this way if they need to go that way um and so you know how did how did you how did you get the word out to make that many people show up so when we first started, we were in, it was in June and we were planning a September launch. So the first thing I did was reach out to all the special needs organizations in the Tampa area. And they really honestly helped us get the word out. I mean, I, on, I didn't have to do much other than say, hey, this is what we're doing. This is what it's all about. We're going to have a parent meeting, an informational meeting on this date. I need people. And the word just flowed out yeah. you know it um when it, um councilman lewis vieira was really big in helping us get the word out and um phyllis guthman of the disability resource hub i call her our penguin project cheerleader um so she she was very helpful in getting everything out and all of that information out into the tampa bay area and since then we followed up with all of those organizations every year and say okay now it's time to start another penguin project here's the information you know and then it's just word of mouth I mean, once you've seen it, it's really hard not to talk about it. Right. And how, and so, and obviously some of the peer mentors were siblings, um, but not yes. all. Not right? all. So, did, yeah. So did you do anything in particular to recruit um, them or did it just kind of organically just, if you build it, they will come type of thing? Well, we reached out to all the charter schools, private schools of, yeah. you know, the age group that we're looking for. So our young artists start at eight and they go all the way up. Um, our oldest is now 28. So to give you the age range there. So we just reached out to all the middle schools, the high schools, um, reached out through all of our theater connections to pull in theater kids. You know, this year we've really had to we've really had to recruit more adults. Um, You know, this year we we expanded from 37 young artists to 49 young artists, which is a big, big jump. But most of those young artists were are actually over the age of 18. So, you know, we had to reach out to more adults and we involved like more um, reached out to USF and a bunch of places like that to pull in people of a similar age to our young artist. Yeah. And, you know, it'll be, I'm so looking forward to seeing one third more if my ma- my math is correct of, of, of people up there, you know, I, I, you know, I, a few descriptions for you that I've had, Angel is one of them because 
A, there's no doubt in my mind you were put on this earth for this reason. Okay, I mean, like, you know, all of your backgrounds, personally, professionally, etc., was there. But to do what you've done, I mean, I've seen the hours. I've seen the labor of love that you do. You truly are an angel, and I just honor you so much for that. Mm-hmm. Um, my other term for you is cat herder because, I mean, especially if you get getting together, I mean, not just them, but the peer mentors and um, this the sheer number of kids out there. And, you know, if, you, if you've ever been with cats, you know, you can't really hurt cats. But yet very, very quickly, I mean, you set the rules, you set the criteria from that very first one. And, you know, certainly we've certainly seen a special needs child who isn't necessarily want to be compliant that day. Maybe they had a bad day. We've certainly seen the occasional meltdowns. But my goodness to bring that number of any kids together let alone a bunch of you know ch- with most of them having special needs it's just amazing to see how, how how you've been able to pull that off now um this upcoming pr- um performance which is happening um um so the, the actual dates of the performances are march 11th 12th and 13th right and the location is at usf theater one Yes. Please tell everybody, and we'll get back to this at the end as well, but please tell people how they can purchase tickets. You can go to newtampaplayers.org, and there's a button at the top right that says tickets, and if you click on that, it will lead you to Penguin Project tickets. Excellent, excellent. And, you know, this is at the USF, um, in the USF Theater, gorgeous theater, like all the, you know, all the trimmings, if you will, um, you know, to be there, you know, our, 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 the first time it it was done in a, um, in a, in a gymnasium um, at a community center, which is wonderful. But, you know, obviously it's been, we've done an upgrade here, which is wonderful as well. Um, So tell us about the first, you know, let's, let's go a little bit through the different productions that's been done so far. Oh, wow. So a trip down memory lane, so to speak. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> so our first production was Aladdin, and that was in 2019. And that's the one that was at the University Area CDC. Um, and that was truly a special experience because it was the first one. And I feel like all of the parents, we were all like, oh, you know, is this going to really come together? Is this going to come together? You know, and it really did. I mean, the magic, I remember that Tuesday night before we opened on Friday and our choreographer, um, Mr. Brad, he and I were sitting, we sit below the stage and kind of mini direct, you know, um, and he, you know, we we're going, okay, is this going to come, you know, and then Wednesday and it just kind of solidified and we were like, we've got a show and just that feeling in that one moment. And then of course, opening night when you get all of, you know, you have the audience and everybody's laughing and they're clapping and all of that. That's, that was truly an, a amazing experience yeah and seeing the young artists which for many of them this was the first type of they had experience anything like this and i just remember so much like the first audience response you know you know (laughs) to like the first and like i just remember the looks on some of their faces of like oh this is not just real but this is really cool (laughs) you know (laughs) and 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 that was just such a spectacular thing and the the the, i forget the name of the young actor who played genie um his name is connor connor and you know when I spoke, when, when I, after watching this, and I think it was after the first performance that I asked his mom, because, I mean, Connor did a dead ringer for what Robin Williams did. And, you know, and, and, and actually, because of the way he was talking, I actually didn't know if that was part of the way he just naturally spoke. And his mom's like, no, no, no. He was that was his role. That that's the way he was doing it. And, and she shared with me that he watched all of these other community theaters of this production. I mean, of different productions. And and after like watching several one, he says to his mom, like, well, why doesn't anybody sound like Aladdin from the movie, like Robin Williams? And she's like, I don't know. She, he's like, can I play it that way? And like, I remember her mom's like, yeah, of course you can play it that way. And my goodness, from the dance steps to to his delivery to the to you know, I mean, that's that's a. That's a really hard role compared to the other ones, I feel, because you need comedic timing for that mm-hmm. particular role. And he nailed it. <laughs> and I was just like, ah, I just I, my, I was aghast from that. And, um, you know, and so and actually the, the, the lead um, actor who played um, Aladdin, um, Jaden, um, just so that, you know, and uh, people know that um, we've recently created a, I recently created a Patreon page um, and um, both he and so my daughter, Naomi, who has been um, part of the Penguin Project from the very beginning. It doesn't matter what else in the world could possibly be going on in, in Naomi's life. This is her top priority. You know, it doesn't matter. It, it, it mean, like. 
a friend could want to come to town. No, it's, it's Penguin Project Night. I'm, I'm, I I have to do this. And uh, so the two of them are actually going to be guests on my show, um, <laughs> uh, are going to be guests the week following the production to kind of get their takes on it and to be able to see it from an actor's and a, and a mentor's perspective. So we will be posting that on Patreon. So who anybody uh, wishes to be a subscriber, you'll get to see a very, very special episode when we do that. And information is down in the comments below. So, uh, so please hit that up. Now, so this was um you see, this was Aladdin. So Aladdin went off to a roaring success. And it's then good. we went to Peter And Pan. then the next year we did Peter Pan Jr. And that one was at USF. So that was, as you said, the upgrade because we had outgrown UACDC. Um we needed bigger dressing rooms, we needed a bigger stage, we needed we just needed bigger in general. <laughs> you know, so we upgraded to USF Theater One. And that was a very different show, really, than Aladdin. Um, Because yeah. Aladdin has all of the big show numbers, you know, you've yes. Friend Like Me and those types of things. And Peter Pan doesn't, for the most part. I mean, it has, again, songs that we all know from watching Mary Martin, the Mary Martin special, you know, all through the 80s. But um, not really those big showstopper numbers. It has more of the, you know, the tender moments of Wendy and all and, um the parents and that type of stuff. So it was a really different show. Um, but our pirate crew, you know, they brought it for every single number that they had. They really did. <laughs> I, their, their spirit in that and their coordination together. I mean, that, that is absolutely the thing I remember most about that performance when they're all up there with the hands up and they're posting their swords up in the air. Um, yeah, I mean that that will be actually the scene that I will always remember from this. So so yeah, that's that's absolutely incredible. And um so so we had that and so then we had to take a pause for this thing called COVID. Okay? Yes, we did. And we did yeah. not know how lucky we were because Peter Pan closed a week uh, Sunday before the world shut down on Friday. And we just didn't know how lucky we were to get through that show. Right. Right. But the Penguin Project, the show must go on. Show must and go on. the Penguin Project did not shut down. Please tell us about what the Penguin Project did and what you personally did, because you were the one that that was really the, the, the ringleader for all of us. So share a little bit about what, what went on during this year when we couldn't do it. Well, the first thing we, you know, I was thinking about, I was thinking about all of our young artists that were now going to need to wear masks. And mask is a brand new experience along with all the other brand new experiences that we went through with COVID. So we first started with making a mask wearing video where I showed them how to put on a mask. And then we had all of their friends wearing masks and all you know, parents, you know, took pictures of themselves wearing masks. And we, um, for Peter Pan, we had a pirate crew, like w one of the, um, Gasparilla crews, um, came, you know, and, um, we got them to go ahead and put on masks and took pictures of them. So we had a whole video of all of their friends and all of their parents all wearing masks along with, you know, encouragement to practice wearing the mask and all of that. So that was the first project. And then we read Mary Poppins. So they would be prepared for the story of Mary Poppins. And we started doing Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, five o'clock phone call or Zoom calls um, for 30 minutes just so they could see each other and talk to each other. And we had, we eventually needed themes. So we, you know, we talked about various, their favorite this or their favorite that, or, you know, did you see this movie that came out on Disney Plus this week? And, you know, all of those types of things, basically the stuff that they like, you know, that they wanted to talk about. Um, so we did those all through COVID. We actually didn't stop the Monday, Wednesday, Fridays until we began Mary Poppins Jr. So that was over a year of Monday, Wednesday, Fridays. And then Penguin Project at Home started in October of 2020 when it was pretty clear that we couldn't come back in person. But um, we decided to do it over Zoom. It wasn't a production, but we um, did, we ha helped them learn how to do their own choreography make up their own choreography. Um, they made up an original play together. They, um, they also did painting, um, visual art with um, a, a teacher from Arts for All Florida. And they did spoken word poetry. 
So we, we did that in quarters and then we made a little showcase, you know, edited a showcase together at the end of each of the quarters of the, of the program. So we did that so that they could all see each other, stay engaged, you know, have stuff to do and be creative. And then this past summer in like late July, early August, we all came together and we made kites and we got to meet the people that had helped us, you know, do with the choreography and all of that. And we learned a little bit of supercalifragilisticexpialidocious. So, you know, just to round up that whole experience before we launched into Mary Poppins. Excellent. Excellent. Um, so now we have Mary Poppins ahead of us. I mean, and uh, or you're, certainly you're in the midst of it, um, but but the, our, we have the performance coming up next week. Um, so now a year was taken off. We now have, I know that there's been certainly more um, um, young artists who have come in, but we now also have some seasoned Penguin Project artists here. Um, do you see any difference in how this um, this year went with the preparing for the Penguin Project? I mean, comparing for a um, for Mary Poppins compared to um, how the others went. There are a lot of differences. Definitely a lot of differences. So you know, since COVID is still active, we have been doing all of our rehearsals outside and masked. Um, so that was definitely a change. All you know for. Aladdin and Peter Pan, everything was inside. So we had to adapt everything to an outside setting. So that was a big change. Um, we also saw some differences of, you know, just as the different young, as we brought in new young artists, you know, you have different, and the dynamics kind of shifted, you know. Um, so that was fun and interesting to see. And, you know, we came, you know, young, the new young artists were very enthusiastic. And, you know, you have, when you have new young artists coming in, you have to divvy up the parts too. That's very yeah. important. <laughs> so that yeah. was definitely a shift. Yeah, definitely. Because definitely some of the, the people who have kind of become some of the stars of Penguin Project and all of a sudden like, wait, there's other people here too. So, <laughs> but uh, again, done with with, uh, with the grace that you've done things like that. And, you know, and again, just getting the buy-in, you know, from all of these kids and, and as well as the, the support adults. But again, you, you've continued to do that. Now, um, some you, you had mentioned as far as the council, um, the councilman and some of the things, but tell a little bit more about the community support and the grants and, and what, what how that's grown. The community support's really grown. So in addition to all of the all of the special needs organizations, and there's a ton of them. I mean, I email over 104 organizations every time that I send out a um, blast about tickets or a blast about the you know the next year. Um, there's organizations. The um, Rotaries have really been help you know been super supportive. We have several that are sponsoring, and we have several that are helping us do things like load in the set on Sunday night and load out the set the following Sunday. So in terms of volunteers and support, and I'm going to pull up this lovely list of sponsors because there's, it's so long. I yes. cannot memorize it. The Vinnick family foundation is one that comes every comes in every year and they help us really to afford the rental at USF. So they're very, very important um, the Suncoast foundation. Mosey always sponsors our cast party every year. Um, Florida State Division of Culture and, and Arts in Hillsborough County. They give us funding as an or New Tampa Players as an organization every year. Um, RSA Consulting, Ameriprise, um, Root Logistics, Domain Homes, Bella V, um, Amco at Zephyr Hills, New Tampa Women's Club, the Temple Terrace Arts Council, Hartfield Productions, Focus Academy, the Temple Terrace Women's Club, the action flooring restoration and of course big dog and his family and for people go. who don't know big dog his, his name is zach muller and he goes by big dog um and he was one of the original um, members of penguin project so he and his family always help sponsor our t-shirts every year got it yeah so i had alluded to a little bit some of the observations that i've had of some of the actors um I know that some of the actors, I mean, they're doing things that they've never done before. Quite frankly, I think that many of their family members never thought they could do before. They just, it wasn't in their skill set, for lack of a better way of putting it. Um, and then magic happens. Tell, share with me some of your, your, of your, of your fond memories and of like some of those like wow moments or just like what you've observed from, from you being there every day in, in terms of like, you know, the buddingness of the young performer. 
I think some of my favorite stories have to do with children that come in or really young adults. I've got to stop saying children. I'm going to get to that. But, you know, um, they come in and they're so shy, you know, and, you know, and they just, you know, at the very beginning, they kind of just stand there and they're like checking everything out. But they're very, very unsure. And then one day they just decide to participate. When we did Aladdin Jr., we had a young artist that sat down on the side for 17 rehearsals. And his peer mentor just sat next to him, you know, and then, but on that 17th rehearsal, about 30 minutes in, he stood up and he knew all the choreography. He had been watching that entire time absorbing, but he knew exactly what to do. He was just waiting until he was comfortable. And once he was comfortable, he had his moment and he was all in. Um, So those types of moments are some of my favorites. Um, Go ahead. Go ahead. No, and, and, and just that the Penguin Project gives these artists the space to do that, right? I mean, just to have a, you know, um, again, to, to, have a, to have a peer mentor, to have the patients just, you know, just to sit there and, 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 and uh, you know, they're, they're, you know, certainly the, um, the level of functioning of children, you know, is very, very differing through. Um, and yet each mentor just kind of is able to be there for what that artist needs. You know, and it's like they're just so connected and coming back to that, like, you know, pairing up as a penguin, you you, you got each other's back, you know, mm-hmm. and and I will tell you, you know, when you mentioned about Mosey and I remember when, when I think it was after the first one after after Aladdin. And I remember when all the kids were playing um, on that back play area and, you know, just watching them all running around together. And I'm thinking if somebody were to just walk by and didn't know who these kids are, nobody would know who the artists were and who the mentors were. You know, they were just this one big conglomerate of just fun, you know, <laughs> and the, the the glee on their faces and just to be able to watch th- this type of thing come together where realistically, if it wasn't for the Penguin Project, neither the artists nor or the mentors probably would have ever had that type of life experience and, and to think about what could actually happen in that situation. And or- I think the other part of it is, is that these kids can do, a, they can do so much more than we first think they can do. They just need the support to do it. They need the encouragement. They need the time. They need somebody standing right next to them going, yes, you can do this. It's going to be okay. You know, and that's the beauty of Penguin Project. We meet every young artist where they are, you know, fully accepting what they can do, what they're willing to do at the time and however they come that day. You know, if they've had a bad day, they've had a bad day and that's okay. You know, and many have come with having a bad day and have left having a better day. And that's very important. Thank you so much. Just thank you. Thank you. Thank you just for everything that you do. Um, I really, really enjoyed my time talking to you today. It's been such a pleasure. Again, I cannot wait for next week to see what you what what everybody's gonna pull off. Like, I mean, I know I won't be surprised anymore. The surprise thing happened the first time, right? Now I'm just gonna absorb. I'm just gonna absorb this beauty, this art, this community, and I again, I know I won't be dry eyed for much of this, and uh, I, I doubt anybody else will. So again, um, you know, going to the pay, um, going to the new Tampa players dot org uh, website, um, please purchase tickets. Tickets are still available. Do yourself, do your family, do your friends a favor. Bring everybody. You will have an experience like you've never had in your life. And you will be, I'm going to cry now, you will be a different person by the end of that performance. It's not possible to not be. It's that impactful. You will remember this for the rest of your life. So please, everybody, come get tickets, support in any way, sponsorships, donations, get stuff at the at the snack bar. Um, all of that stuff certainly comes to help the Penguin Project, and it's been great. Um, so um, again, for everybody who knows, if, if um, again, please join us on our Patreon page. Um, please subscribe to this YouTube channel and join us on our other social media um, um, handles. Um, all the information, again, is down below. Nora, thank you again so much for taking your time. I, I know that you have a full day ahead of you because you have you have you have more rehearsals ahead of you, let alone next week for tech week, which again, 
just being part of that. I, I know that you, that you need about a you need a cruise and then a, and then a, and then a vacation after that. Um, just after these weeks are over, just to kind of recharge your batteries. But I have a feeling, just the the, the amount that I know about you, that you you get there. You, you get pretty charged. <laughs> I'm so glad for, to, glad to know you. Thank you so much for having me. I really appreciate Ab- it. Absolutely. Have a nice day, everybody. Thank you.